Chapter 7 of The Holiest of All by Andrew Murray. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Christopher Smith. Chapter 7 The Son Himself God. Hebrews chapter 1 verses 7 to 9. And of the angels, he saith, who maketh his angels spirits, and his ministers a flame of fire. But of the Son, he saith, Thy throne, O God, is for ever and ever, and the sceptre of uprightness is the sceptre of thy kingdom. Thou hast loved righteousness, and hated iniquity. Therefore God, thy God, hath anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. In contrast to what is said of the angels as servants, the Holy Spirit hath said of the Son, Thy throne, O God, is for ever and ever. Christ is not only the Son, but is God. He is one with the Father. As Son, He is partaker of the Father's own nature and being. Christ is God. To many Christians this has been a dead article of faith, held fast and proved out of Scripture, but without any living influence on the soul. To the true believer it is one of the deepest and most precious truths for the nourishment of the inner life. Christ is God. The soul worships Him as the Almighty One, able to do a divine work in the power of divine omnipotence. Christ is God. Even as God works in all nature from within and in secret, so the soul trusts Christ as the everywhere present and the indwelling One, doing His saving work in the hidden depths of its being. Christ is God. In Him we come into living contact with the person and life of God Himself. The truth lies at the foundation of our epistle and the Christian life it would build up. Christ is God. Thy throne, O God, is for ever and ever. As God, Christ is King. The throne of heaven belongs to Him. When an earthly father has begotten a son, they may be separated from each other by a great distance, both in place and character, and know each other no more. In the divine being it is not so. The Father and the Son are inseparable, one in life and love. All that the Father is and has, the Son is and has too. The Father is ever in the Son, and the Son in the Father. God is on the throne, and Christ in Him. The throne and the kingdom are Christ's too. For ever and ever. Christ is the King eternal. His dominion is an everlasting dominion. The full meaning of the word eternal will become clear to us later on. Eternal is that which each moment and always exists in its full strength, immovable, unchangeable. We receive a kingdom that cannot be moved, because our King is God, and His kingdom for ever and ever. The rule of Christ, our priest-king, even now in our souls, is in the power of an endless and imperishable life. The faith that receives this will experience it. And the scepter of uprightness is the scepter of thy kingdom. Christ is a righteous king. He is Melchizedek, the king of righteousness. In his kingdom, it is the kingdom of heaven. In it, the will of God is done on earth as in heaven. And when it is Father said, Thou hast loved righteousness and hated iniquity, we are reminded that the righteousness is not only his as a divine attribute, but his too as the fruit of his life on earth. There he was tested and tried and perfected, and found worthy as man to sit upon the throne of God. The throne which belonged to him as Son of God and heir of all things, he had as Son of Man to win. And now he reigns over his people, teaching them by his own example, enabling them by his own spirit to fulfil all righteousness. As the king of righteousness, he rules over a righteous people. Therefore God, thy God, hath anointed thee with the oil of joy above thy fellows. He is an anointed king. Therefore, because he loved righteousness and hated iniquity, therefore God anointed him. When he ascended to heaven and sat down on the right hand of the throne, he received from the Father a new and in fullest measure as the Son of Man the gift of the Holy Ghost to bestow on his people. Acts 2.33 That Spirit was to him the oil of joy, the joy that had been set before him, 
the joy of his crowning day when he saw of the travail of his soul an anointing above his fellows for there was none like him god gave him the spirit without measure and yet for his fellows his redeemed whom as head he had made members of his body they become partakers of his anointing and his joy as he said the lord hath anointed me to give the oil of joy christ our king our god is anointed with the oil of joy anointed too to give the oil of joy his kingdom is one of everlasting gladness of joy unspeakable and full of glory o ye souls redeemed by christ behold your god the son in whom the father speaks let this be the chief thing you live for to know to honour to serve your god and king this is the son in whom god speaks to you in all the divine mystery but also in all the divine power and blessing which marks all god's speaking let our hearts be open wide to receive the king god hath given us as often as we are tempted with the hebrews to sloth or fear or unbelief let this be our watchword and our strength my redeemer is god in this faith let me worship him my redeemer is god let my whole heart be opened to him to receive as a flower does the light of the sun his secret mighty divine working in me my redeemer is god let me trust this omnipotent lord to work out in me his every promise and to set up his throne of righteousness in my soul in a power that is above all we ask or think my redeemer is god let me wait for him let me count upon him to reveal himself in the love that passeth knowledge blessed be the name of god for ever and ever my redeemer is god who is god and what is god to us he in whom we live and move and have our being he is the life of the universe and how wonderfully perfect all that life is in nature when we know this god as our redeemer in whom we live and move and have our being in a higher sense what an assurance that he will make his new life in us as wonderful and perfect thou hast loved righteousness and hated iniquity therefore this was his way to the throne this is the only way for us living and doing right and hating everything that is sin end of chapter 7